Welcome to Healthcare Workflow Process Improvement, Concepts of Workflow Process Improvement. This is Lecture A. The objectives for Lecture A are to describe the purpose for workflow analysis and redesign in the clinical setting, describe the role of a healthcare workflow specialist, explain how healthcare workflow process improvement and meaningful use are related. Tom DeMarco, an early pioneer and thought leader in process analysis, said in his 1979 book, Structured Analysis and System Specification, that procedure, like dance, resists description. DeMarco, 1979. One of the workforce roles described by the Office of the National Coordinator for Health IT, ONC, is the Healthcare Workflow Analysis and Redesign Specialist. Using this analogy, individuals in process analysis and redesign jobs are experts at both describing the dance and at choreographing a better one. Before we start, and in a way, as an introduction, we will cover the following definitions. Process, process analysis, process redesign, workflow, workflow analysis, and data and information flow. Merriam-Webster, 2011, defines process as a series of actions or operations conducing to an end. Similarly, the American Society for Quality, ASQ, 2011, defines process as a set of interrelated work activities characterized by a set of specific inputs and value-added tasks that make up a procedure for a set of specific outputs. Still another authoritative source, the Business Process Modeling Notation, BPMN, Standard, Mears and White, 2008, defines a process as what an organization does, its work, in order to accomplish a specific purpose or objective, and goes on to say that most processes have input, consume resources, and produce output. The word procedure is related to process. The American Society for Quality, ASQ 2011, defines a procedure as the steps in a process and how these steps are to be performed for the process to fulfill a customer's requirements, usually documented. Processes can be described at different levels of detail, high level, i.e., not much detail, or a very granular level, i.e., a lot of detail. I think of the latter as a procedure. Important characteristics of processes for our work are that processes have, one, steps, also called activities, actions, operations, or tasks. Two, the steps have sequence or order. Three, processes have inputs and outputs. And that, four, processes happen over and over, i.e., are ongoing. For example, appointment scheduling is a common process in healthcare facilities. Merriam-Webster, 2011, provides several definitions for the word analysis. The one most relevant for our work here is an examination of a complex, its elements, and their relations or a statement of. So, a process analysis is an examination of a process to understand its elements, such as the inputs, the process steps, the outputs, and the relationships between them, including things like the order of steps, what things can be done in parallel versus sequentially, who or what performs the steps, maybe where they are performed, and what information is needed or generated. Because the goal of our analysis is to ultimately improve a process, we also look for things like gaps, lack of conformity with best practice, such as meaningful use of health IT and healthcare quality improvement, delays, redundancy, rework, and lack of efficiency. For us, the combination of 1. Understanding process elements and the relationships between them, and 2. Identification of opportunities for improvement comprise process analysis. Merriam-Webster, 2011, defines redesign as to revise in appearance, function, or content. Process redesign, then, is the revision in appearance, 
function, or content of a process. The reason why we analyze a process is to improve it. The improvement is achieved through process redesign. A significant amount of process redesign in healthcare today involves the introduction of Electronic Health Records, EHR. A report published by the Institute of Medicine, 2001, Crossing the Quality Chasm, offers six key areas in which healthcare in general can be improved. And ultimately, these six areas, discussed in detail later, are our goal. For now, we will think of better as safer, more efficient, more convenient, less errors, and more cost-effective. In quality improvement, process redesign, also called process reengineering, sometimes has the connotation of drastic and major changes, expected to result in breakthrough improvements. The American Society for Quality, 2011, defines process reengineering as a strategy directed toward major rethinking and restructuring of a process, often referred to as the clean sheet of paper approach. This is in contrast to process improvement, which sometimes takes on the connotation of more incremental change, is defined more specifically by the American Society for Quality, 2011, as the application of the plan, do, check, act cycle to processes to produce positive improvement and better meet the needs and expectations of customers. We will cover more about both of these different approaches in the unit on process redesign. The workflow topic on Wikipedia, 2011, defines workflow as, a workflow consists of a sequence of connected steps. Another online resource defines workflow as the sequence of processes through which a piece of work passes from initiation to completion. Concise Oxford English Dictionary, 2011. In everyday use, the terms workflow and process are used interchangeably. Workflow is often more specifically thought of as the flow or path of the work steps, i.e., the way in which work progresses, including things like order of steps and selection between alternative steps. Like a process, a workflow has inputs and outputs, i.e., resources, mass, energy, information, and the people or things that perform the steps or activity that comprise the work are considered. In this component, the words workflow and process will be used interchangeably. Now that we have defined workflow and processes in general, we can talk more specifically about healthcare. Clinical workflow is the way in which activities in the healthcare setting are carried out, by whom, in what order, etc. Examples of clinical workflows include admitting a patient, submitting a claim, prescribing a medication. Think about your last visit to your provider. If you could break the visit up into clinical processes, what would they be? You might have considered patient registration, intake, payment, waiting to be seen, information checking, gathering, checking vital signs, visit with the clinician, ordering tests, diagnosis, writing prescriptions, drawing blood, referral to another provider, billing, or something like them. They are all sets of activities that accomplish a particular goal, a sub-goal, of a patient visit. For example, checking vital signs measures and records necessary data for patient care. Information checking such as medication reconciliation, i.e., comparing the medications that the patient is currently taking to those that are listed in the patient's chart, is necessary for quality of care and patient safety. Each of these processes accomplishes a part of a patient visit. Each would be considered a process or a workflow. One person's data flow may be another person's information flow. Like process and workflow, the words data and information have specific definitions that are used in certain fields and are often interchanged on other fields and in everyday use. Early work done in the 1960s and 70s uses the term data flow. More people today tend to use information flow. For the distinction, see the diaphoric definition of data, DDD, and the general definition of information, GDI. For this component, and because most of the literature that you will see, uses the two words interchangeably, 
in this component, we will too. When we use the terms data flow and information flow, we mean the steps or path that the data takes through a work process or a system or some combination of both, including the order of steps and operations performed on the data or information. A healthcare workflow specialist uses knowledge and understanding of two key things. One, an organization's objectives, structure, and procedures. And two, information technology for the purpose of improving how the organization operates and achieves its goals. Tom DeMarco, introduced earlier as a pioneer and thought leader in process analysis, likens process analysis to describing a dance. He adds further insight to the process analysis part of the role by emphasizing the intensive communication requirement and by describing the following three key communications challenges that process analysts face. The first is the natural difficulty in describing any process or procedure. The second is the inappropriateness of narrative text for describing procedures. And finally, there is a lack of common language between the user and analyst. Healthcare workflow specialists require very strong written, visual, graphic, and verbal communication skills to overcome these challenges. Successful healthcare workflow specialists are strong listeners and are able to identify when others are uncomfortable or having difficulty or not in agreement and are able to constructively work through difficult situations. DeMarco further outlines process analysis skills helpful to overcome the challenges inherent in process analysis. These are knowledge of data and data system concepts, knowledge of clinical workflow concepts, and the ability to communicate these concepts. We added the ability to identify problem areas. If process analysis is describing the dance, redesign is choreographing or planning a new dance. For us, the dance is the interaction between humans, information, and computers in the clinical setting. The key skill a process redesign specialist needs is the ability to combine, analyze, and synthesize the organizational knowledge, including knowledge of clinical workflow and technology to create a better way. John Gall, in his 1970s book, Systematics, said, Systems run best when designed to run downhill. The goal of process redesign is to find the downhill design, i.e., the design that takes the least amount of input energy to get the desired output. The downhill design is the one that will have the least errors, the highest quality, the happiest staff, and the lowest cost. A professor at the University of Arkansas, Dr. Elizabeth Pierce, told a story in one of her information quality classes about Penn State that is a great example of designing systems that run downhill. At Penn State campus, the footpaths made by students did not last very long. Whenever the university built a new building or expanded, instead of fencing off new landscaping, they left it open and waited for students to make paths between the buildings. The architects and landscaping staff waited to see where the paths were worn. These were usually the shortest distances between the most important places on campus and the places where walkways were most needed. Once they were spotted, the footpaths would be replaced by a paved walkway to make the new route a permanent part of the campus map and with good lighting so they were safe. Or if the footpaths were considered unsafe or undesirable, the campus planners would find some type of barrier to discourage further use of the footpath. Less wise institutions are not able to see the signs of a process trying to run downhill and fence off areas as soon as new construction is complete. People still make paths, but they are muddy and messy and lack safe lighting. A similar example in intensive care units is the importance for people on a ventilator to have the head of their bed at a 30 to 45 degree angle. One creative and early team in healthcare quality improvement used red tape to mark the bed so that it was easy for the staff to see whether or not the bed angle was correct. This was much easier than other methods like a question on a checklist. Is the height of the head at least 30 degrees? A clever person redesigned the process to run downhill. Why do we need to improve the workflows and processes currently used in the healthcare organization? Why are we using health information technology in the clinical setting at all? A 2000 Institute of Medicine 2000 report 
estimated that 98,000 or more people die annually in the U.S. due to medical errors. This is more than die from motor vehicle accidents, breast cancer, or AIDS, and more than die from Alzheimer's, diabetes, or pneumonia. The 2001 report, Crossing the Quality Chasm, specifically listed five imperatives for increasing quality of health care in the United States. This list included re-engineered care processes, effective use of information technologies, knowledge and skills management, development of effective teams, and coordination of care across patient conditions, services, and sites of care over time. Institute of Medicine, 2001. Most of these involve or depend on health IT. Workflow process improvement is at the heart of increasing the quality of health care. As the great thought leader of quality, Edwards Deming stated, you can only elevate individual performance by elevating that of the entire system. Thus, this effort is focused on the entire healthcare system. Deming, 1982. Crossing the Quality Chasm provided six aims and simple rules for redesign of healthcare. They are care should be safe, as safe for patients in their healthcare facilities as in their homes. The science and evidence behind healthcare should be applied and served as the standard in the delivery of care. Care and service should be cost effective, and waste should be removed from the system. Patients should experience no waits or delays in receiving service. The system of care should revolve around the patient, respect patient preferences, and put the patient in control. Unequal treatment should be a fact of the past. Disparities in care should be eradicated. Institute of Medicine, 2001. Importantly, increasing the quality of care is our goal. Implementing technology is a way to achieve this goal. Under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, or ARRA, the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health, High Tech Act, established a program offering incentives to help providers implement standardized technology. The purpose of these incentives is to encourage the greater healthcare community to implement EHRs, thus paving a path to improving quality. In order to receive the incentives, the expectation is that the providers meet a set of criteria by adopting certified technology and use the technology in meaningful ways. Meaningful use of EHRs is used to collectively describe those criteria. This coordinated adoption of EHRs across healthcare providers address the five established national health policy priorities, improve quality, safety and efficiency, and reduce health disparities engage patients and families, improve health care coordination, improve population and public health, and ensure adequate privacy and security protections for personal health information, PHI. Eligible providers and hospitals can qualify for incentives during the first stages of meaningful use. But as the program continues, there will be Medicare payment reductions imposed for providers who do not meet the criteria. The incentives are a fixed dollar amount for the initial years, while the penalties for not meeting the requirements are in the form of a several percentage point decrease in the reimbursement payments from the Center for Medicaid and Medicare, CMS. The grid outlined in this slide indicates the incentives per year that an eligible provider can receive when starting the program in 2011, 2012, 2013, or 2014. To hospitals, small and large practices, and healthcare facilities, this means millions of dollars. The MU incentives considerably offset the cost of obtaining and implementing health IT. Some of the meaningful use criteria include CMS 2016, privacy and security, data capture and sharing, data standards such as ICD, SNOMED, Rx form, LOINC, effective clinical workflows, computer based order entry, electronic prescribing, clinical decision support, patient health information exchange. For providers to meet or successfully claim that they are using health IT meaningfully, they must achieve the requirements stated in the meaningful use rule. We can use the following two examples of what providers are being measured against. 
The first example is the requirement that more than 30% of all unique patients with at least one medication in their medication list seen by the eligible provider have at least one medication order entered using CPOE, Eligible Professional Meaningful Use, Core Measures, Measure 1, 2016. Another example is the EP that transitions or refers their patient to another setting of care or provider of care, one, uses CERT to create a summary of care record, and two, electronically transmits such summary to a receiving provider for more than 10% of transitions of care and referrals. Eligible Professional Meaningful Use Core Measures, Measure 5, 2016. The full criteria is available on the CMS website. Meaningful Use, MU, has evolved since the beginning of the program. Originally, the criteria outlined both a core set and a choice within the menu set of objectives for eligible professionals, eligible hospitals, and CAHs. For 2016, eligible professionals must meet 10 objectives and eligible hospital and critical access hospitals must meet 9 objectives. Each year, meaningful use objectives expand on their previous version, focusing on the aims and priorities of the Nationality Quality Strategy. Initial focus during Stage 1 was electronic capture and sharing data. Stage 2 criteria encourage the use of health IT for continuous quality improvement at the point of care and the exchange of information in a structured format. For 2015 and beyond, the focus continues with data capture and structured format, while adding an additional focus of improving outcomes using health IT. One of the fundamental requirements of meaningful use, in addition to meeting the measures, is to use certified technology. CMS and the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology, ONC, have established standards and other criteria for certified technology that providers must use in order to qualify for this incentive program. CERT has the capacity to provide clinical decision support, support physician order entry, capture and query information relevant to healthcare quality, and exchange electronic health information with and integrate such information from other sources. Store data in a structured format. Structured data allows patient information to be easily retrieved and transferred, and it allows the provider to use the EHR in ways that can aid patient care. Certified EHR technology gives assurance to purchasers and other users that an EHR system or module offers the necessary technological capability, functionality, and security to help them meet the meaningful use criteria. Certification also helps providers and patients be confident that the electronic health IT products and systems they use are secure, can maintain data confidentiality, and can work with other systems to share information. Source, https, colon, forward slash, forward slash, www.cms.gov, forward slash, regulations, dash, and, dash, guidance, forward slash legislation forward slash EHR incentive programs forward slash certification dot HTML. Meaningful use began in 2011, requiring providers to meet stage one objectives. In subsequent years, additional stages of meaningful use were implemented, again paving the path to improved quality outcomes. In April 2016, CMS introduced additional proposal to expand on the goal for improving quality outcomes using CERT, while also focusing on payment reform. In the proposed rule, meaningful use is renamed Advancing Care Information and is one of the four components that eligible providers would need to submit to meet the expanding requirements. This concludes Lecture A of Concepts of Healthcare Workflow Process Improvement. In this lecture, we defined key terms including process, process analysis, process redesign, workflow, workflow analysis, and data and information flow. Described the practice workflow and information management redesign specialist role and skills. In addition, we worked an example where we described a patient visit in terms of clinical processes. Discussed the patient safety and healthcare quality reasons 
Why Health IT is a National Priority, and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. Discuss the CMS program to incentivize nationwide adoption and meaningful use of health IT.